Happy Friday, everyone, and luckily for all of us, we can start our weekend on a slightly better note because we now know who the hacker behind FTX was or is, and that is none other than the Bahamian government themselves. According to them in a document that they released uh, not too long ago, they state that they exercise their powers under regulatory acting in order to pretty much confiscate the funds and digital assets within FTX digital uh, markets. So this is very interesting. So that whole kind of unknown as to who accessed these funds in FTX, well, now we have an answer for that. We also have an answer for uh, a lot of the questions and concerns about digital. Uh, digital is is a massive, massive company. Uh, digital Currency Group has uh, owns a lot of additional subsidiaries. They own CoinDesk. Um, they own you know a, a you know their trading branch. They have Grayscale uh, Bitcoin Trust. They have Grayscale Ethereum Trust. Now most are concerned about the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust because it's trading at a over forty percent discount. Which if you know what that means, we'll go into it in, 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 later in the video. It's a it's not good. It just really isn't good. A lot of people are really concerned about that, but. To highlight a few positive things that we'll talk about, Cardano launching their own stablecoin. And if you are a soccer or a, uh, a soccer fan in the U.S., a football fan everywhere else, uh, Chili's is doing extremely well, uh, especially with the World Cup. So with that, more news in today's video. If you're new here, my name is Alex. Talk about crypto, crypto news, crypto passive income. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing. If you enjoy the video, smash up the like. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, if NFTs and poker are your thing, well, here is an opportunity for you. Tomorrow, there is a poker tournament being hosted by Cardinal House and Club Monte Carlo. Uh, a bunch of projects are going to be presenting alongside of Fraction Mining. So we will be presenting there tomorrow as well. At 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, there is a $250 up for grabs and it is free for community members. So something worth checking out if that is up your alley. But with that said, let's jump in the news. Well, at least you can start your Friday off on a good note because now we know who it was that was the hacker <laughs> behind FTX. It was none other, none other than the Bahamian government. Remember, this story broke late Friday of last week talking about uh, this situation that, uh, you know, uh, early hours of Friday after FTX's bankruptcy filing, it was announced that FTX had been hacked. There was potential malware. Uh, people concerned that if you go on the website, there might be downloading Trojans. And well, you know, a, a lot of people didn't know. They thought it was an insider. No one really knew until, well, the uh, Bahamian SEC comes out and says, hey, our, uh, you know, our Supreme Court ordered us to pretty much hack into FTX and withdraw all the funds and put it into our own uh, cold storage wallet. So uh, that's interesting to see. You know where the the mystery and every, mystery and everyone's trying to track to see who took the funds and where they go. Um, and, and well, at least now we know uh, there is a bit of controversy about this situation, but uh, hopefully it is for the better of everyone who has any funds uh, inside of FTX. So uh, at least it's not a bad actor specifically. It's not you know SBF or someone from FTX. Uh, it is a regulatory body that's holding those assets now. What's been coming out more and more recently outside of all the companies, which we'll talk about in a second, that have been impacted, that continue to come out and say, you know, this is how many millions we lost because of FTX. Uh, FTX, over the course of the, the past couple of years, has been making very strategic acquisitions. They acquired uh, Ledger X, which is a CFTC regulated clearinghouse. Now, this should have been under more scrutiny as to, you know, the due diligence before the acquisition. But they made so many strategic acquisitions that would get them in favor with the SEC, potentially a backdoor interest or with the CFTC. So it's been a lot of things coming out as more and more evidence gets put forward. Now, some of the collateral damage that's happened with this is both uh, not specifically Coinbase, but Silvergate and Grays Grayscale Trust continue to hit lower lows. So Silvergate, if you look at this, and we'll talk about why it's impactful, is actually down nearly 10% just today. Uh, if you look at just the five days, it is down, um, you know, probably like 40, 50%. Um, it was definitely down since October three weeks ago. It is down uh, over 50%. It's down about 55% as uh, the, a publicly traded company. Now, the reason a lot of people are concerned about Silvergate is not necessarily that Silvergate had exposure 
directly to FTX, according to them. Silvergate's behind a lot of crypto projects. A lot of uh, companies have used Silvergate, which is, uh, depending on how you may look at it, may not be the best. Uh, it's typically a, like a last resort for a lot of crypto companies as a bank. And so the concern that one specific trader said, uh, Mark Rhodes, an early critic of FTX, said that FTX deposits with Silvergate are a sizable percentage of the banker's overall deposit base. On Tuesday, he said that um, he is shorting Silvergate, noting the size of FTX deposits with the bank is a huge red flag because FTX has a billion dollars in deposits with Silver Bank, but they say that it represents less than 10% of their overall total deposits. But still, just one specific entity having that much within a bank is uh, a, a bit of a red flag for some people and that's probably why we're seeing the implications there now as more and more companies as i said not too long ago uh more and more companies continue to come out stating their losses within this whole ftx collapse uh genesis block hong kong said they have 50 million uh ontario teachers pension pension fund is writing down their 95 million dollar investment to zero dollars we saw Sequoia Capital do over a $200 million investment. They wrote down to $0. Uh, Nickel Digital says they have about $12 million stuck on uh, FTX. So it's just one thing after another. And then obviously, this was probably one of the biggest things. And we don't know the specific dollar value, I don't think, yet. But uh, a huge hedge fund had a large majority of their total assets within the hedge fund itself on FTX. So it's just so so much money it'll be interesting to see what kind of statistics come out as to how much money specifically was lost by you know um hedge funds by venture capital firms by pension funds by exchanges that all trusted ftx and alameda research uh, and all they were really doing is they were giving money to ftx for alameda to gamble on and, and <laughs> once you realize that uh it just it kind of boils your or uh i don't know what the term is but it just gets to you a little bit more it stings a little bit more uh when you realize that jump crypto like we talked about in yesterday's video are coming out and, and just making sure everyone is fully aware that they're not shutting down they're the according to them the most well capitalized and liquid firms in crypto uh they don't uh think that any of this is um, going to be uh, affecting them in, in win any way, shape, or form, even though we talked about some of their exposure to a prior projects that have failed, such as Terra Luna, Voyager, uh, and other projects uh, that aren't doing as well, such as Serum and Solana. So uh, something worth keeping on. Now, some of the biggest news is the stuff happening with Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and Grayscale Ethereum Trust. Now, specifically, this is a concern because, well, the parent company is Digital Currency Group. Now, Digital, Digital Currency Group also owns Genesis, which is the company that Genesis Trading stopped withdrawals, and that halted the Gemini Earn program. Uh, they are uh, they own Grayscale as a subsidiary, CoinDesk, Foundry X, uh, and I don't really know the these other two, but. Um, you know, Foundry X is a crypto mining company, uh, CoinDesk, obviously news company, but Grayscale is the one that most people are concerned about. And currently the reason people are concerned and you know, obviously not a lot of people like, uh, Peter Schiff, but what he does state is interesting. They say that today, this was as of yesterday afternoon, Grayscale Bitcoin trust trades at a 43% discount to its NAV Bitcoin trading at 16, seven. Shareholders of GBTC were willing to sell their Bitcoin for the equivalent of $9,500. So what that means is if you're selling shares in GBTC, you're share selling an equivalent of a $9,500 Bitcoin. But the, the, the issue you have with GBTC is that based on the amount of shares, you can't necessarily take out that amount of Bitcoin uh, based on the shares. So it's a bit of a complicated process, but the, the issue is that specifically ethereum as well when you look at the, the article where we talked about uh that you know you're having issues that you know both both the grayscale bitcoin and ethereum trading at over a 40 percent discount which definitely is not a good thing you know they say that it's the record lows and you know you have some people thinking that this is going to drive more contagion in the market um and, and the current discount it is definitely not positive. Um, you can see here the Ethereum product hit an all-time low. The Bitcoin product hit an all-time low. 
But Grayscale did say that products are operating business as usual, um, and they've not been impacted by any of their of the current events. They're a separate entity, so uh, take it at their word. But hopefully, everything is good. You can kind of see some of the details here on that. Now, positive, positive news. Some exciting stuff, especially if you're Cardano Maxi and uh, you enjoy the Cardano ecosystem and wanted to see something like this happen. They are getting a Cardano-based regulated stablecoin, first fully backed regulatory compliant stablecoin in the Cardano ecosystem. So we've heard this before. We heard this from Tether. <laughs> we've heard this from USDC. But this is going to be exciting uh, to see some of the opportunities with this specifically. And, and obviously a great thing for Cardano. Um, probably going to be able to drive some more adoption and users to Cardano uh, specifically if people want to hold uh, stable coins on their ecosystem. So uh, pretty, pretty exciting uh, to see some of the opportunities, especially something like this, if you are a huge Cardano fan. And then lastly, you know, uh, the World Cup is drawing a lot of attention to Chili's, not the peppers, but um, Chili's the token. And uh, Chili's has really done well comparative to where the rest of the market is uh you know especially during this time it's recovered quite nicely you know down from 15 cents it's almost doubled in price since everything started really falling out uh, a lot of contagion was spread but obviously with the uh you know opportunity within the world cup and the publicity is getting it's definitely a positive thing for the cryptocurrency just expect uh, probably a little bit of a retracement after the the world cup is over so that brings you up to speed with everything happening right now in the crypto space. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think that Grayscale is fine? Are, are they, do you believe them at their word that they're not at all impacted by anything happened recently with the FTX or separate entity? They're perfectly fine. Uh, and why would anyone sell their D GBTC shares when they're 40% discount based off the current Bitcoin price? So. Something worth to consider, something worth talking about, comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider hitting the like button. If you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. And until next time, guys, stay invested.